This documentary is brought to you by Barefoot Doyen. Visit us at www.barefootdoyen.com and follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more. The links are below. Attention may translate into ticket sales, more streams, and an increased brand awareness. But not every musical artist and group is focused on fame. You may have heard about the Chromatics from the weekend's new album, After Hours. What you might not know about is their visual and sonic influence on this generation. guitarist Adam Miller's solo project, the Chromatics underwent a few lineup changes and didn't really nail down a signature sound in their early years. The music of the band's initial releases wasn't exactly that dreamy, 80s electro homage that we associate with the Chromatics today. Instead, it was a lo-fi, art-punk flurry. The Chromatics' first two records are relics of a different era. Johnny Jewel is only really present here as a producer and multi-instrumentalist on their debut album Chrome Rats vs. Basement Ruts and their follow-up album Plaster Hounds. Singer Ruth Radelet, whose voice is the band's present-day calling card, didn't join the Chromatics until their third album. By the end of this era, Miller and then bandmate Lena Okazaki were beginning to write more electronic music, a sign of what would come. The Chromatics' third studio album, Night Drive, was released in 2007 on Italian's Do It Better, the band's most acclaimed release to date. On Night Drive, the group ditched their hairy noise rock troupe aesthetic in favor of a neatly groomed pop dance quartet. In their review of the album, Pitchfork noted that, The transformation of the Chromatics has been so effortless that it's still easy to be wowed by the results. Adding that listeners who are familiar with the band's forays into shambling punk will certainly be surprised by Night Drive's assured songwriting. The meticulous obsession with structure and usage of disorienting repetitive motifs were filtered through pop rock and synthetic electro. The resulting album is among the best examples, if not the best example, of the new millennium's obsession with 80s nostalgia. The Chromatics 4 studio album, Kill For Love, was released on March 26, 2012. The album has been described as sounding like a time warp, a warm collision of past, present, and future. On May 7, 2012, the group released an alternative version of Kill For Love for free download, featuring 11 songs from the original album with no drums or percussion. Songs from the album have been featured in television shows such as Bates Motel, Gossip Girl, Mr. Robot, Parenthood, Revenge, Riverdale, and 13 Reasons Why. Kill for Love was named the 8th best album of 2012 by Pitchfork. The 80s tinged dreamscape serve as the perfect backdrop for songs about melodrama, melancholia, and mischief. To follow Radelet's lyrics is to dive into a world of depression and ecstasy, emotions that truly fall on opposite ends of the spectrum. Chromatics have played at numerous music festivals around the world, most notably at the Paris Pitchfork Music Festival and the Barcelona Primavera in 2012. In September 2013, the band opened for the English band The XX at the Hollywood Bowl. They were even personally invited by Carl Lagerfeld to play the Chanel Spring Summer 2013 fashion show in Paris. So that brings us to the obvious question. Who's most accountable for the chromatic success? The easy answer is producer and multi-instrumentalist Johnny Jewell. The more important question is, what does Johnny Jewell not do? From fine-tuning the band's iconic sound to directing all the music videos and controlling the band's visual aesthetic, Jewell even runs his own independent label, Italians Do It Better. When asked about this, he said, Fortunately, because I run my own label, I can do things as I see fit. 
Some people may be annoyed by that and I apologize. It's not to be an elitist or a snob. I just don't like advertisements for art. That's something I feel really strongly about. I'm not trying to trick anybody into liking us or listening to us. We do it because we love it. Jewel would go on to compose music for the films Bronson in 2008 and Drive in 2011. He also scored actor Ryan Gosling's 2015 directional debut, Lost River, and Fian Troche's 2016 film, Home, for which he won the Georges De La Rue Award. His solo works have also appeared in David Lynch's series, Twin Peaks, The Return, which was a major blessing to have worked so closely with someone who heavily influenced his visual outlook. Not everything has been smooth for the chromatics. They have been accused of borrowing concepts and not being original. Italians Do It Better co-founder Mike Simonetti went on a Twitter rampage going off about Johnny Jewel and Money Owed. He even accused him of stealing song ideas and having an overinflated sense of self. But what really is success without a little bit of controversy? While accumulating millions of streams, and frequent high-profile collaborations with the likes of David Lynch and The Weeknd, the glitzy group still remains enigmatic and just beyond the limelight. With artists like Schoolboy Q sampling Cherry for his most streamed single ever, Man of the Year, to the recent collaboration with The Weeknd, it is evident that the Chromatics are one of the most subtly influential bands today. <laughs> 